Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And in this video, we're going to talk about a phrase I've heard from many, many, many credit teachers, right? So there are teachers out there who teach about like understanding credit. And uh, there was a time in my life where I had no idea what credit was even for. Uh, what would happen is that a lot of people would talk about the the mythical credit score. Like if you don't reach a certain score, then it's almost like, you know, they always talk about it with like a fear-like tone, almost like your life is over. And so that's why I never understood what credit is for. And I was too afraid to touch the subject just because in society, uh, that kind of attitude is there. Now, eventually I did understand credit and I totally, I found out something that blew my mind that um, if you have no desire to borrow money, um, you don't need credit, right? You don't really need it. And I, I, I had no idea credit was even about borrowing money because everybody focuses on the score, kind of like the SAT score, right? Like if you ha have the certain SAT, uh, you know, university entrance exam score, that's supposed to de determine something when in reality, it doesn't really determine anything. Now, let me talk about um, things related to personal development, right? Personal development in this space is, is very needed because it determines how you feel about yourself, especially um, in context with like going to a bank, right? So I remember there was a time in my life where I was too scared to even apply for a credit card because I thought I would get rejected for some reason. Or if I did get the credit card, if I asked for a credit limit increase, I always felt like they were going to be, the banks were going to be suspicious of me. Like, why would this person never ask for a credit limit increase? And uh, of course, that's totally a founded, but I always felt that sense of guilt inside, which is why, and a lot of it just comes from um, not being educated properly about credit, how banks work, um, you know, how credit limit increases work. And there's a aspect of it that has absolutely nothing to do with credit other than how you feel about yourself, right? So if you ever have the feelings that, that you're not worthy, that's going to take a mental toll on you uh, of learning how to, let's say, develop your credit because you can't go into a bank and ask for, hey, I want an X amount of loan and just give them the paperwork and that'll be it and then you get the loan, right? So that's that's one thing. So when you go into the bank, you feel like everybody's more knowledgeable, maybe everybody's more judging you. But when you become knowledgeable and, and you, you experience that personal development, all you see when you go into the bank is just a teller who's paid uh, probably a little bit more than minimum wage and has never received any training. And you know more about the bank products than the people who actually work at the bank, right? And another thing that you, you want to kind of uh, have a understanding of is like, you know, if they lend you money or they you, you're able to get credit, who's doing who a favor? Like, are you doing the bank a favor by being their client or is the power dynamic the other way around where the bank is doing you a favor by lending you money? And it really, in almost every, pretty much every interaction that you have, you need to develop a mindset and a framework where whoever you're interacting with, you're doing, you're doing them a favor. They're not doing you a favor. Even if, if you have to be a little delusional about it, where, the person you're working with is the one actually you doing the favor. You have to be a little bit delusional that you're doing them a favor. And kind of an analogy that I could think of is that let's say you get rejected from Harvard, right? You get rejected from Harvard and you say, okay, well, the people at Harvard are pretty stupid for not considering me to be a university applicant. And I don't understand why they would reject me because I got it all, right? Versus the type of student gets rejected and begs Harvard to take them back in and reconsider their admissions. You don't want to be the second type of person. You want to be the first type of person. Now, what is this related to? How does this relate to the topic of banks only lend you money when you don't need it, right? Because it's related to that personal development and the power dynamic that I, I, I just talked about. So... This kind of training is not like one of those trainings where it's like, it's kind of a fake training, but it's a real training, if, if that makes sense. Um, 
because this is kind of one of those metaphysical things. Like, I guess you could talk about manifestation uh, where it's like, if you think it, then it will be kind of true. Although there is like a mathematical formula and algorithm to how they do things, right? You'll notice that when you fill out a lot of credit applications, um, it's just purely based on a machine algorithm and you get their decision like immediately, whether you get a, a credit card or a credit line or credit line increase. Um, and then, you know, if you kind of get rejected, they always tell you, oh, we're going to look, do this, uh, do manual underwriting, get back to you in three to five days, which essentially means you got rejected, right? So none of what I'm going to talk about is actually real, but but I want you to kind of consider it to be real, right? So just pretend that the bank algor algorithms um, can read your emotions. So this is a really easy way to figure out if you're going to get credit lines, credit cards, you know, loans, credit from, from the lending institutions, really easy way. To, and just pretend that the, the bank algorithms can actually read your emotions even though they can't. So this is, like I said, this is like a fake training. Deep down inside, do you feel like you need the credit, right? Regardless of your score, regardless of your income, regardless of anything, do you feel like you need the credit? If the answer is yes, you're probably not going to get it, right? You're probably not going to get it because banks do not usually do, and I can't say this like, oh, 100% of the time, usually do not lend to people who need the money, right? And this is why people always ask like, hey, um, you know, the, the, the bank was offering a credit line increase and I didn't accept it. And, and again, I can't give like, personal advice direct advice of what to do to any of you but in my mind i'm like why wouldn't you take it like you don't need it that's when you take it right that or at least that's what i would tell myself and and i've had these moments in time in my life where basically i was desperate for credit because i needed the money and then when i applied for credit that's when i got rejected and i felt like there was something wrong with me right there was, I felt, I really felt like there was something wrong with me when, because even though it's not true that the bank algorithms can read your emotions or your situation, just pretend that they can. And you, it's like, it's we, ear, we, easy, weird way of figuring out if you're going to get credit or not. Now, obviously there's a real truth about how lending institutions tell what they depend on whether you're, they're going to give you access to credit, which is based on your credit profile, your income, probably your money. Uh, monthly rent payment, your debt to income obligations. But if you want an easy, cheat way that, that is not based on reality to figure out if lending institutions are going to give you credit or not, just ask yourself deep down inside, and let me go ahead and highlight this. Let me go ahead and highlight it. Do you feel like you need the credit? Do you feel like you need the credit card? Do you feel like you need the loan? If the answer is yes, you're 99.9% .9 probably not going to get it. If the answer is no, you're 99.9% .9 probably going to get it. And that that's that's pretty much almost a fact of life, right? And that it, it, this doesn't just apply to credit. This almost applies to everything. If you feel like you need it, it probably won't be given to you. And if you don't need it, it probably will be given to you, Right. So that's why I talk about like this is somewhat related to personal development training because that's that's what a lot of um, personal development emphasizes like a, a mentality of, of abundance, really. Okay, all right. So this is uh, Korean Atlanta mentorship. If you have any questions about what we talked about, just leave a question or you know comment question below. If you're interested in joining our group, feel free to click the Google form link down below, or you can email us uh, by going to the about section of the YouTube channel and ask us any questions. We'll get on a Zoom call and, and introduce ourselves and see if you're a good fit for the group. All right, so have a great day and we will speak next time.